today I'm going to show you guys how to make pizza dough. These are all the ingredients you'll need right here. Measure out some yeast. Do it about a teaspoon here. Then we're going to need a little bit of sugar. Also about a teaspoon. And then to activate it, just a little bit of warm water. And we're going to set this aside for about 10 minutes or so. Okay, now we're going to use some whole wheat flour. This is about 3 cups worth. baking soda. I would say about a teaspoon to a tablespoon for this. About a teaspoon of baking soda, or baking powder, sorry. Half a teaspoon of salt. quarter cup of sugar, maybe a little bit less if you prefer, then I can mix in about a tablespoon or so of butter, or margarine for that matter, just so it kind of looks like breadcrumbs. An optional step I like to do is add a few seasonings. These you can do completely up to your own liking, but I'm going to put a little bit of Italian seasoning, a little bit more savory, a little bit more sage. A little bit of onion powder, and finally a little bit of garlic powder. I'm just going to mix this up really good. I'm going to set this aside until the yeast is active. Okay, now that the yeast has risen, we're going to add that to the, the flour. Now we just add warm water slowly until we have enough to form a nice tight dough. dry dough. We don't want it to stick to our hands, but we don't want it to be too tough that we can't work with it easily. 
all the flour doesn't stick into it. That's not problem because we want to let it rise and it will soften up a little bit. Now we're going to sit this aside for about an hour to let it rise. Alright, so we've got a pre-buttered pan here as you can see. I'm just going to get out all the air bubbles from the dough. Just by rolling in my hands a little bit. If you find your hands are too sticky, wash them good, dry them good. I'm in a little bit of canola oil. And we're just going to lightly press this into the pan and get fairly flat. As you can see, got a lot of dough here, so it's going to be a fairly thick crust of pizza. You can cut the ball in half if you want, make thin crust, or you can use a larger pan. Now we don't want to get all the way to the edge yet, because we are going to let it rise in the pan for a few minutes. Now we cover this with the towel and we let it rise at room temperature for about half hour. If it's quite warm out, I would say 15 minutes or 24 hours in the fridge. They call me the shredder. As you can see, I've already pressed out the dough after it's risen the second time. Now, a little bit of pizza sauce, or any sauce that you prefer. Now, this one will be posted on a later video, of course. I'll just spread it out. You can put it as thick or as thin as you like. Leave about a half inch around the outside so you have a nice crust on it. And now you can put any toppings you like. Toppings that are more likely to burn, I would put on first. Today I'm going to make a simple three cheese pizza just to chew things up. I'm putting a little bit of Parmesan down first because this cheese is very likely to burn. And like I said, with the topping, you can put as much or as little as you like. So now I'm putting a little bit of cheddar. This is marble cheese. And I'm going to finish it off with a decent amount of mozzarella. Now what I like to do is I'll have the oven preheated to between 350 to 375, nothing higher because it turns oils into trans fat, which you don't want to have. And I'll cook it for about 10 minutes and I'll check on it to make sure everything's cooked. Right, so in this case, we had to cook it for an extra 5 minutes, so it was 15 minutes total, so that's because the crust is rather thick. Now if you have a rolling pin, or a a rocker blade or a pizza knife or anything like that, you can use it. I'm just using a good French knife. Always be very careful with knives, especially if they're sharp. However, a dull knife is more dangerous because you're more likely to tear flesh and need more stitches and it will be more painful. One three cheese pizza.